Dialect to me is all about presence. It's about focus. It's about listening. It's about paying d deep attention to others. And paying attention in a way that's not adversarial or argumentative, but more interested in understanding uh, where somebody else is coming from. I'm an entomologist by background. Bees are my specialty. And uh, it's bees that really brought me to dialogue. When I walk into an apiary, time slows down for me. I am completely present, aware of what's going on around. And I'm opening hives that contain many thousands of individuals whose survival is dependent on communication and it's dependent on collaboration and collegiality. And so when I began working at the Center for Dialogue, to me it was a natural transition to walk out of the apiary and walk into the classroom and walk into workshops and walk into the kind of venues and environments in which we foster the spirit of dialogue. I think the prime moment I always come back to in our teaching program that I think reflects everything we try to do at the Center for Dialogue happened during the um, build-up to the uh, 2010 Olympics. Uh, our students put on a dialogue about how the Olympics might affect community. And this happened about a week after an, a near riot happened when the Olympic clock was started over by the art gallery. And at this dialogue were very vocal anti-poverty activists and people from tourism in Vancouver and officials from the Olympic Committee, pretty wide spectrum who just a week ago had been almost coming to blows. And there was a key moment when a gentleman from the, um, I, would, I would describe him as a street person uh, who seemed to have some mental health issues, so I wouldn't want to diagnose him, but uh, he got up and um, began talking. And rather than trying to shut him down, or rather than trying to exclude him from the conversation, the students helped him express himself. He was an individual with some difficulty in expressing himself clearly, and they talked with him about, so is this what you mean? Uh, that's really important. We're so glad you're sharing that with us. And rather than a, kind of the typical rant you might expect from somebody with the issues that this person was manifesting, he was able, with the students' help, to express himself clearly. And it was a turning point in this conversation. Relationships are the key and the core to dialogue. The um, understanding of why someone thinks the way they do, their history, their personal or their cultural or ethnic or religious background uh, is absolutely critical. But beyond that, it's really difficult to yell and shout and scream and hate someone when you've had dinner with them, when you've talked about your families, when you've understood not only the issue that they're concerned about, but also the full spectrum of what they bring to the world as a person. I've come to see the impact that I'd like to have in one very substantive way. I think many of us have a divide between the person that we are and the person we could be. And that divide is what makes us ha unhappy as individuals and as societies on personal issues and on policy issues. And if I have any um, desired impact in the world, it is to facilitate, to mentor, to encourage each of us to become much more the full person that we can be, and through that to really develop a sense of caring and um, responsibility for each other.